Hey, good afternoon. Today's topic, or this weekend's topic, is one that plagues all of us, I'm sure. What do you do when you run out of space? After all, it is the final frontier, I've been told. And more importantly, space to put your models is the final frontier. And every once in a while, you just got to stop building and start making more room. And that's what I'm doing this weekend. I'm doing a little bit of organizing. Uh, actually, I do have some model to show you. Uh, but uh, it struck me the weather's beautiful. I could be outside building. Uh, I picked up a couple organizers uh, for uh, LEDs and stuff. I just want to get more organized. Uh, I've got little piles of crap all over the house and I need to consolidate them and make them easier to uh, to access. But this weekend's project is going to be making some new uh, display spaces, uh, display shelves for for the kits. What happened is I got that Terminator tank finished and then realized the thing is too bloody big to put anywhere. Uh, it's got quite a footprint so it doesn't really inconspicuously fit on a shelf. So um, luckily uh, I've got two things that uh, uh, really help in a situation like this. I've got a um, what would you call it? It's a uh, it's a store fixture su store fixture supply store. Really, it's a it's a warehouse for uh, uh, you know the display cases for for retail stores. And I went down there this morning, and I was able to get some two or four, sorry one foot by three foot long pieces of glass for glass shelving. Um, it just looks better. I like it. You can see through it or up and under. It's uh, about the same weight as wood. Doesn't uh, doesn't take as much fussing because you don't have to finish it. It's it's glass. It's done. You don't have to seal it or paint it or anything. So I'm just going to make some glass shelves and it, they just visually take up less space when you're looking at them than wood does. So I'm going to do wood sides with glass shelves. So I got that, and then I went to uh, Lowe's, a uh, home improvement store, like a Home Depot or any other type of store that you might have with you. Uh, there, luckily, there's one less than a mile away, so I was able to uh, go there and get some wood supplies, and then when I ran out, go get some more. Um, I kept it simple by keeping things rounded. Excuse me, uh, lunch. Uh, keeping things rounded like the shelves are one foot by three foot so the the cap or the shelving unit becomes one foot deep by three foot wide the three foot wide on the inside plus the wood to the outside but uh, and then I'm just gonna simply sand them and spray paint them black uh, the wood should disappear and then the uh, the shelves are what you see um, so let's go see uh, where we are at that hold on one second and you'll have to forgive me, I don't have a lot of space to work in. This is my lovely spacious carport, and this is the only space I really have that I can work in that's the least bit level, and this is the back porch, which you've seen many times if you've seen me spraying on top of the garbage can. But really, there, there are the stack of pieces that it takes, uh, pre-made, pre-cut, pre pre-sanded. Uh, this is one by... Uh, one by 48, one by four foot, and those are the two are the one by three foot uh, top and bottom moldings for the side. And I can take you into the kitchen and show you the unpainted finished. Now I have no back in it yet, and I have yet to decide whether I'm going to put it back in it. But there's a simple set of shelves. Three glass shelves, a to solid top and a solid bottom, and these are set one foot apart. Now for the other one that I'm building that's going to match this, I think I'm going to set the shelves closer and maybe try to squeak in one more shelf uh, for smaller kits. But that's, that's the finished goal. As you can see, the basic box went together pretty quickly. Uh, there'll be some 
I gotta put the uh, the, stand, the uh, stays in for the shelves now, but this is your basic box. I had one big boo-boo there, but I will uh, fix that. And one more bit of putting in the, uh, the little half quarter round uh, stays. I'm, like I said, I tried to put four shelves in this case so that I could put smaller kits in it. But, uh, ooh, hello, Mr. Fly. Um, let me tap down this. These little finish nails sometimes don't want to go all the way in. But that's it. Uh, now I need to do a little bit of trim on these, sand them, and I'm just going to spray paint them black. That'll be the next step. Okay, here are the match set. Uh, they got to be sanded, they got to be painted. This one has four shelves, that one has three, but they are all ready for sanding and painting. Okay, here's one of them painted. Um, it's the first coat of a black spray paint on the inside. Now, on the bottom here, I think I'm going to put some fabric down, so I'm not really worried about painting that. But uh, this has taken most of a big rattle can to do, and um, I probably will still end up coming over it with a brush-on uh, latex paint. Uh, I don't know how well this is finishing. I'm going to let it dry for a while and then maybe go over it with a light sandpaper, see how well it looks, and then I'll decide whether that's going to be my top coat or not. But uh, starting to get dark out, well, getting into the late of the day. So I think this is as much as I'm going to get done for today, at least on this project. Lest you think I hadn't been working on models this week, after I, I actually was working on this while I was working on the Terminator stuff. Whenever I needed a break on the Terminator, I would uh, go in, come back in here to the other room and uh, work on this project. This is what I picked up at Wonderfest. This was basically the first and only thing I was looking for at Wonderfest was this uh, moth model from the TV series Lex. I don't know how many people remember that, but a uh, funky little show, great design, very... Um, Farscape-ish in its design and uh, by no small coincidence the gentleman who makes this kit also makes the best Farscape kits in the land so uh, um, um, Highly recommend it. The uh, the neat part well actually I was happy that I was able to get these eyeball domes and The frames to fit in them. Uh, there was a little bit of fiddly work there. I was kind of afraid that the domes being vacuform and vacuform not being my favorite element that uh, they would not work, but, in, but in, they did in short order. The, the neat thing about these, or the hard part, the, the, where all the work goes in it, is in the legs. Now the legs have these braces with faux pistons and uh, cables and whatnot coming off of them. And all of that has to be scratch built. Now uh, the leg is the leg and uh, the these uh, circular brackets here are part of the kit but as far as all of these hoses and the brass for the pistons and whatnot you gotta make all that up yourself uh, you're given the scrap um, two different widths of uh, brass for the pistons and you're given this wire and uh, some very general explanation of how long each of them need to be but I find that uh, I just did them by eyeball and uh, I like them just fine I didn't try to cut them to any specific uh, measurements I mean I didn't I didn't get out the ruler and measure each one of them I kind of eyeballed what was about halfway or two-thirds of the way for the the main cylinder and then filled out the rest of the room with the, the secondary brass but uh, and I cut some extra wire, um, this is just uh, electrical wire, thin electrical wire coverings. Uh, turns out I had enough, they, they had, had given me enough, but I was getting antsy, so I uh, made sure I had plenty to spare. Now what I've got to do yet is paint this. Uh, the frames are silver, the balls on them are, are black. Uh, the pistons and everything are silver, not brass, so 
Had I made them out of aluminum tube, they'd already be done, but they need to be painted. And then they need to be attached to the, this, to the body. And then the last big deal, a complicated painting, is going to be the wings. Wings go on, and I mean, they don't move or anything, they're stationary. They go on kind of like that. I've, uh, they're casting clear, obviously, but I've sprayed this with a Pactra uh, iridescent white or a pearl white, and uh, it gives a nice iridescent look to it. Uh, the camera is not really picking up the maybe a little bit of the shading, but uh, I'm going to take a fine brush and go in and paint these veins in, uh, give a little bit more detail there. But that's the project I was supposed to be working on this weekend, but then I got the itch to make some cabinets, so um, que sera sera. There you get an idea with the model that inspired my uh, reason to build these, so uh, it has quite a nice amount of room. I don't know. Um, of course, this is going to sit way up in the air. It's going to sit up on something, so the whole thing is going to be higher. I don't know whether I'm going to add any lights to this cave, this cabinet or not. If I did, I would probably put some uh, LED strip lights, maybe back here inside the uh, molding, so you wouldn't see them from uh, the outside, but you would get the, uh, they would light the model from the inside. Maybe I'll put a corner, ooh, I could put a corner block in there. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I can put a uh, quarter molding in there. Let me, uh, hold on one second. This is from the back, and uh, there's a nice bit of corner right there. This piece is too long. Um, I'm not going to cut it for the sake of this video, but you get the idea. Put this corner molding back in there, and then run the strip lights down the front of it. All I have to do is drill a fine line, or fine wire. Yeah, that's going to work. Okay. I think I've got it. There you get the idea. There. Right. That's the reason I had to make this case was for that kit. And now I've got plenty of room. Now this is even on the one that has the shelves tighter together. Uh, the other shelf has fewer and more space so even bigger kits can go on these. But uh, this will definitely take the take the place of what... Uh, let's see. Let me put this... I can put it down on this lower case and have both of them there. Yeah. And like I said, once this is raised up on the base, it will be up about up at eye level, so good. It even looks nice with no lights on. All my lit kits. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Okay, it is day two. Uh, today we do the bases of the uh, cabinets. There are all of the wood panels I will need to do the bases. Uh, I'm trying something interesting for the backs. Now the backs, I couldn't get wide enough pieces. Uh, I, well, see, there's the car. So uh, I'm not gonna fit big panels of anything in the back of that car. And I don't really wanna hassle anybody, friends of mine, to uh, borrow a truck or anything. So what I'm gonna try is uh, wood flooring. And I found the cheapest laminate wood flooring that they had. And I'm going to try it out because I can slide it together, plus it's very thin. And we're going to see how that works on the back. Because when I'm done, I can put it in place and I've got a nice finished back. And I think it'll look nice behind um, the glass panels for the top and for the bottom. Here is one of the uh, backs drying. I've sanded it a little bit. I need to run out and get some more black spray paint for those. But... Um, Let's get to work on building the bases. Okay, firstly, be glad I'm not showing you myself on camera. I am one sweaty mess. But secondly, here is what a base looks like with a top on it. Uh, I have to get far back so you can even see what's going on. The uh, shelves were spaced specifically for some books that I have that are too tall for normal bookcases. So the bottom shelf is dedicated to the tall books, second to the second is tall books, and then whatever space was left over goes on the third shelf. And then here you see what the glass shelves would look like on top of it. Oh, I'm out of breath. That's nuts. This is outside. This is heavy work. So 
I'm going to quick whip up the second one. Now that I've got all the math figured out on the first one, the second one should go together pretty easily. And then I'm going to see if I can get these guys stained. I'm not going to put the backs on them today because I want to be able to get in around. They're so deep that if I put the backs on, I won't be able to get in and stain them. This way I can work from both sides, front and back, and get the stain on evenly. But i got to sand the bases first, put another coat of spray paint on the top. Ah, more in a bit. Okay, this is where we are for the weekend. I got both of those done. Now I've got to paint them. I've got first coat of black on one. I've got to put, finish the first coat of black on the other. And then I've got to put a second coat on both of them. I've got the second base done. Uh, and it all but killed me. There's the second base. I don't know. Third base. I'm not asking you who's on third. Uh, there's the second one. I'm going to sand them. There is a matter of uh, the wood two inch trim around the bottom that I have not put on yet. And of course nothing has the backs put on it yet. And the backs will be done after, after all the painting and staining and finishing is taken care of. Because the backs are pre-finished. Uh, I'm not going to get any stain put on these today. I am beat. I am beat to the point of death. And what I'm going to do is sand these, sand the bottoms, and put a coat of paint on the tops and call it done. And then I'm going to cut this together and get it uploaded.